my day today is spent working as the project coordinator of a European Horizon 2020 project, BAM, or Buildings as Material Banks. Uh, the goal of this project is to support a systemic shift towards a circular built environment by creating technical, business, and policy tools. And through working on this project, a very important issue has come to my attention, and that's a need for policy coherency between uh, policies that are coming from climate action and policies that are more about resource efficiency. So before to go into um, the problem a bit more, let's have a look at the context and what are we really, what are we looking at in terms of facts and figures? Why is this an issue we should care about? Well, the buildings that we study in, work in, sleep in, and the construction sector that creates them may not be the thing that comes to mind when we think about the environment, but if we want to be effective in protecting the environment, they really should be a focus of our attention. Why? Well, because we see that the construction industry is responsible for a large portion of greenhouse gas emissions. We see that they're responsible for roughly uh, a third of all waste that is uh, created in the European Union, as well as approximately half of all energy, energy and extracted materials that are consumed. Of course, the figures vary a bit by bit uh, in the different member states, but we can see uh, by and large that waste can be contributed to the construction sector in a significant way in all member states. So why does this matter? Well, if we quote the European Environment Agency, waste is an indicator of materials efficiency and it's also representative of a loss, both in terms of materials resources, but also energy. Well, the good news is that the European Union is already recognizing that construction is an important sector to pay attention to. And there are a lot of um, policy instruments that are already in place. So for example, the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive sets uh, clear energy performance targets for new builds and major renovations. We see that the Waste Framework Directive sets a target of 70% for the recycling of construction demolition materials. Um, we see that the uh, Circular Economy Package puts uh, the construction sector as a priority area of action. And one of the more recent uh, policy instruments that we're seeing come out is levels. So it's a common EU framework for the creation of indicators to actually measure sustainability in the building sector. So for example, these indicators would look at things like energy, yes, but also looking at things like materials and resource efficiency using LCA type indicators. So then what's the problem? Well, I would categorize the problem in uh, two different ways. First, I would say that there's an imbalance between uh, energy and materials resource efficiency when we're looking at these different types of policies. On the one hand, because of the climate agenda, energy is really being put forward as the primary focus. And so what we see is we see a lot of binding leg legislation that targets energy efficiency. What does that do? Well, then we see that in buildings, we're having a lot of uh, gluing and insulation practices that, that are occurring to promote energy efficiency. But in the end, what that may be doing is making it very difficult to extract materials resources from the material stock that are currently in buildings right now. So essentially, the binding energy legislation is going to make it very difficult to achieve our circularity goals. Another thing in regards to the link between climate energy, uh, construction, and emissions, uh, well, if we look right now at the European Emissions Trading Scheme, buildings are non-ETS, and when you see the staggering figures in regards to the portion that is contributed to the sector, one would think that we would actually need some specific goals for uh, the sector. Um, the second category of uh, problems that I would, I would, I would claim exist um, concern a lack of precision and data. When I say lack of precision, what I mean is we see this, that there's currently a 70% target for the recycling of construction and demolition materials. However, uh, what we actually see in the field is that there's a lot of cheating that takes place and a lot of downcycling um, that, that takes place. So for example, this would be the recycling of stony fraction in uh, infill applications, which in reality, that's not at all what we would want to achieve in a truly circular economy. Um, another point would be that, well, while levels is very, good and it's, and, and it's a step in the right direction in terms of indicators and, and collection of data, um, I still see some limitations there. One, it targets uh, professionals, but LCA type indicators aren't something that's necessarily systematically applied in the sector, as well as it remains voluntary. Um, 
I, I believe that we really need to have some sort of uh, binding reason to collect data on circularity in the sector. So what do I recommend? Well, I would suggest that we move away from energy performance of buildings and we take a more holistic approach, uh, reforming the directive into an environmental performance of buildings directive. I would recommend that we set binding circularity targets for new builds and major renovations, learning from the successes of setting binding uh, uh, minimums for energy performance, let's set binding minimums for circularity targets. Um, I would also say that we really need to clarify definitions of things like recycling and reuse in uh, the existing legislation so that we can avoid cheating and really uh, target high level of ambition applications. I would say that we also need to move towards reporting obligations on circularity targets so that we can grow this knowledge base, have a better idea of what circularity exists already in the sector, and better target future policies. And finally, I believe that we need to set some specific emissions objectives for the construction sector. Thank you.